Hello and welcome to your Total Joint Replacement Program preoperative class presentation. My name is Jeff. I'm a registered nurse. I work here at Peace Health Southwest Washington Medical Center and I'm happy to present this information to you on behalf of Peace Health Southwest Medical Center in cooperation with Rebound Orthopedics. Let me also get you introduced to a couple of co-workers of mine. Melissa and I are the Total Joint Replacement Program Coordinators. Now you might also get the opportunity to interact with our other co-worker, Tatiana. Tatiana works days, she also works weekends. You might get the chance to meet her as well. I mentioned my co-worker Melissa. As the Total Joint Replacement Program Coordinators, we are here to advocate for you and support you in any way that we can. We both provide these preoperative educational programs along with our co-worker Tatiana. Between Melissa and myself, we will be coming around daily to check on you while you're with us in the hospital and make sure that everything is going along well. However, we're also available to resolve any issues on your behalf as they might uh, present. We, Melissa and I, also provide our discharge educational classes. We truly are here to assist you throughout this journey. As we get prepared for this class presentation, please make sure that you have your total joint replacement journal available as we will be referring to certain pages. Would you please open your journals to page four? Now on page four, you're gonna see a variety of listings of phone numbers. If you'll check under that session of preoperative contacts, you'll find the phone number for Melissa and myself as the total joint program coordinators. Take note of that uh, phone number and please feel free to give us a call at any time. If you have any questions, if you have any concerns, we will be able to help you. We are available to you Monday through Friday. We don't work weekends and we don't work holidays, but please give us a call if we can be of help to you. Our objectives of this presentation today are to first give you an idea of what your hospital experience might be like. I'm going to present to you a little better understanding of what your surgical procedure might entail. We're going to get you prepared for this surgery and we're going to talk about your coach's instrumental role throughout the recovery process. What are your expectations of this hospital and what is the hospital's expectations of you as a responsible patient? I will also outline for you our strategies with regards to managing your post-operative pain. I'll get you introduced to the therapies that you will be participating in while you're with us in the hospital, both occupational therapy and physical therapy, and then we're going to get you ready for your discharge to go home. We'll get things wrapped up. Continuing your journey, there are certain elements of lifelong care that you need to be aware of for any total joint replacement surgery, and I'll point a couple of those things out. In fact, the single most important thing that I can tell you today, I'm going to tell you in about the last 10 minutes of this presentation, but hopefully I can keep your attention throughout. Okay, let's get started. What can you expect while you're with us in the hospital? First of all, let's talk about the possibility of sleep deprivation. Following your joint replacement surgery, you're not going to get much sleep for a variety of different reasons. As you see pictured in this slide, you're going to be, uh, as a patient, you're going to be monitored very carefully. We're going to have a lot of equipment attached to you monitoring your status. We have one piece of equipment that monitors your oxygen saturation and your heart rate. If there's an issue with either of those, that alarm will set off. We need to come in and check on you. We need to make sure that you're doing okay. You'll also be receiving IV fluids, IV medications. The pump that delivers that medication. If there's a disruption of the flow, that pump will set off an alarm. We need to come and check on you and the equipment and make sure that we're doing well. This is a very foreign environment to you and there will be a lot of noise going on throughout your stay and at night it particularly just seems to get a little bit louder. Now there are some ways that we can help to dampen down some of that noise is. First of all, the door to your room, it can be shut. Please ask and make sure that the staff will shut that door for you. We all make an effort to get that done, but if we forget, just be sure to ask and remind us. If we can quiet down that environment inside of your room, you might get a chance to get a little bit more rest. 
In all of our rooms, we have a white noise machine. If you've never tried one, give it a try. If we can find another noise, a more quieting, settling noise, it might help to give you a little bit more rest and a little better sleep. Now, the staff is going to be checking on you frequently throughout the night. The staff will be checking on you approximately every one to two hours. That doesn't mean that we have to physically wake you up each time that we come in to check on you. I can poke my head in and I can see that you look like you're resting comfortably and well. I can take a look at the monitors and see that everything is going well. However, there will be many times that we will wake you up so that we can have that interaction to make sure that you are recovering well following this major surgery. While you're with us in the hospital, we operate on a very busy schedule and we start our day very early in the morning. In fact, the morning after your surgery, the lab technicians may well come in to draw blood as early as 4 a.m. We need to get that sample drawn. We need to get the uh, results available so that your surgeon and the medical team can review those early in the day. We're going to get you up. We're going to get you dressed in your active wear and ready to take on the day. Early in the morning, you will get a visit from your orthopedic surgeon or a member of that orthopedic team. They will tell you more about the surgery, what they found and what they did. You're going to want that visit from the surgeon. In the morning after your surgery, you'll also get a visit from someone from the medical team. They'll come in to listen to your heart and to your lungs and just to make sure that as a whole person that you're doing well. We start our day very early. In fact, our therapists start seeing their patients as early as 7 a.m. Coaches, we encourage you to come in, be available from the start of the day. The more that you can interact with our staff, the more that you're going to learn in terms of how to take your patient home and to take good care of them. We operate on a very busy day. We're going to get you up. We're going to get you dressed and ready for the activities of the day. Our hospital food. Surprisingly enough, it's quite good. For institutional cooking, I think you're going to find that our hospital food program is quite good. And our dietary department, they will certainly assure the quality of the food that they present to you. However, if you do find that it's lacking a little bit in flavor, just let us know. If you need some salt, some pepper, some condiments, if you want some hot sauce on your hash browns in the morning, let us know. We can provide that to you. As I stated to you, we operate on a very busy schedule. Sometimes we have to set your meal tray aside to take care of some tasks. So if the temperature of that food is not up to your liking, please let us know. Here on the orthopedic unit, we have a microwave that we can heat up and present your food to you. Also here on the orthopedic unit, we have a refrigerator. If you would like to bring in your own foods, feel free to do so. Personal foods, snacks, ethnic foods, regional foods, we can accommodate that. We can keep your foods and then present them to you upon your request. Also, room service will be providing your meal trays to you. You will have the opportunity to select your foods and then our food service team will deliver room service to you. I think you'll find that the food of the hospital nowadays, it's quite good. While you're with us in the hospital, we strive to provide you with excellent care. At this point, I'd like to draw your attention to please, patients, call for assistance. Please, patients, understand that following your total joint replacement surgery, you are at risk to fall. So please, do not attempt to get up out of your bed, up out of your chair, without having some assistance. If your coach is available in the room with you, they can certainly help you to up and move about in and out of the bathroom. Otherwise, please call for the staff to help. You are at risk to fall, so please call for help so that we can come in and assist you. I don't know about you, but have you ever woken up in a motel room in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and you're kind of disoriented for a second or two? Yeah, it's like that times a hundred. So please, call for assistance so that we can help to keep you safe. Let's now take an opportunity to get a little better understanding of your surgical procedure. This surgical procedure will entail the removal of diseased bone and cartilage from your joint and the placement of an artificial joint. And yes, these are metal components. Cobalt, chromium, titanium, all kinds of neat new space age metals and they are designed specifically to stand up to the wear and tear of your activities. Some patients do experience a little clicking 
following their surgery. If that's your case, I'm sure that your surgeon will assure you that that clicking will go away as the healing process progresses and as the connective tissues get stronger and tighter. The surgical incision is closed with skin glue, reinforced with Steri-Strip or a tape. Long gone are the days that we close the skin surgical wound with stitches. Long gone are the days that we close that skin surgical wound with staples. Nowadays, the preferred method is to close that wound with skin glue, and that is reinforced with Steri strips. Now, what's most important to you patients is wound care. How are you going to take care of this surgical wound when you get home? And, and what about the dressings? Well, I assure you, a large part of your discharge education will be about wound care. So, more information on that is yet to come. Okay, let's get you prepared for this surgery. Let's talk about exercises for healing. For you hip patients, would you please open your journal to page 38. For you folks that are coming in for a knee replacement surgery, please refer in your journal to page 40. And if you're coming in for a shoulder surgery, you'll find your exercises starting on page 41. Please take a look at these pictures of the exercises that are presented in your journal. Become familiar with these exercises. In fact, start doing these exercises at home now so that you can get prepared for the surgery. These are the exercises that you're going to be doing while you're with us in the hospital. These are the exercises that are going to lay down the foundation for all of your further exercises that you'll be doing in the outpatient physical therapy clinic and or as you are progressing at home. These are the exercises that you're going to be doing at home two and three times each day. So please start doing them now. Get yourself prepared for the surgery. Preparing for the surgery, eat well. Now, at this stage of the game, we're not going to recommend any major changes with your diet. We all appreciate a good, healthy diet, so please continue with that. Now, if you're a diabetic patient, we encourage you to do everything that you can to maintain good, tight blood sugar control. We're learning so much more about the dynamic ill effects of uncontrolled blood sugars with regards to issues with healing, the possibility of infection, just complications at large. So please, diabetics, do everything that you can to maintain good, tight blood sugar controls throughout the healing process. In preparing for this surgery, drink plenty of fluids. Over the years, we've become more and more convinced that far too many patients come into this surgery and they're a little dehydrated. So at a cellular level, you want to make sure that you are well hydrated. Starting a day or two before this surgery, drink plenty of fluids. Now, if you have a heart or a kidney condition that prevents you from uh, taking in an additional fluids, Understand those limitations, but still come in as well hydrated as you possibly can do. You'll recover better. Avoid nicotine. If nicotine is a part of your lifestyle, set it aside. Again, we're learning so much more about the dynamic ill effects of nicotine in the bloodstream with regards to poor tissue healing, increasing the risks of complications and infections. Set that nicotine aside. You'll heal better. And lastly, patients, please avoid constipation. Following your surgery, you're going to be very prone to constipation. This is largely due to our use of the opioid pain medications. So please do everything you can to be enjoying good regular healthy bowel movements leading up to this surgery. Take stool softeners the week before your surgery if you must. Please, ideally you'll have a bowel movement the day of your surgery or the day before. Please do everything you can to avoid constipation you'll recover better. Okay, let's now turn our attention to your coach, your loved one, that special person that's going to be actively involved in your recovery at home. We rely quite heavily upon our coaches, so thank you for taking time out of your busy life to devote your time in recovering your patient at home. Coaches, you're going to pro provide a variety of different services. Let's talk about medication management. Would you please open your journals to the very back of the book. Open it up a page or two and you will find the pain medication record sheet for home use. This is a great tool to use. As you see, you get the opportunity to record the last dose of that narcotic pain medication that you took, the time of that last dose that you took, 
Are you effectively managing your pain at home? If not, you've got your log, you call your surgeon up and say, Doc, this is exactly what I've been doing. And with this objective reporting, that will help your surgeon to recommend changes for you. Plus, let's face it, we're talking about the use of narcotics and your memory is going to get a little bit fuzzy. So with this tool, you can help to keep yourself safe in your use of these very powerful pain medications. Let's talk about domestic leadership. Patients, please understand that following your joint replacement surgery, you are exempt from doing chores around the house. Oh yes, you are. And if you play your cards right, you can extend this out for a good long time. Patients, please understand that when you're discharged and when you first go home, your number one job is going to be to take care of yourself. So leave all of those domestic chores up to others. They can take care of the cooking, they can take care of the cleaning of the house, the grocery shopping. You can focus on maintaining good pain control and getting your exercises done. And you're going to find that's a full-time job. Let's also talk a little bit about transportation needs. Patients, please understand that following your joint replacement surgery and for a time period, you will not be able to drive. You will be dependent upon others to get out and about. That's because you either haven't regained the functional driving abilities of that limb, or more importantly, you're still on narcotic pain medication and it's not safe for you to be behind the wheel. So you will be dependent upon others to get out and about. Also, coaches, be available to assist in those therapy sessions. Particularly early on, your patient is going to need just a little physical assist from you to get through those exercises and to get the most out of them. So plan on getting together with your patient two and three times each day to help them with those exercise sessions. And provide a little extra TLC. It goes a long way. Okay, let's get things prepared at home. You'll find this uh, information is available in your journal. Let's talk about safe traffic paths and the possibility of removing throw rugs and bath mats around your house. Once again, you are at risk to fall, so please take a look at your house and make sure that you're going to be safe as you are up and moving about. Think about it, you wake up in the middle of the night, you grab your front wheel walker, do you have a clear path to get into the bathroom? Where do the pets sleep? Think about these things and make sure that you will be safe moving about your house. Also, take a look at the, uh, the chairs and the seating that you're going to have available to you. The preferred chair will be at a good level to assist you to get down into a seated position and standing back up. The preferred chair will have armrests that can also support you in sitting and rising. So do take a look at the uh, chairs that you have available and make sure that they're going to be appropriate. You might want to consider storing items at waist level. I know it's already got to be a challenge to stoop down, to squat down, and to get down to low drawers and low cupboards. Do think about moving those items, bring them up to a higher working level, a more ergonomic working level. As your conditioning improves, as your strength and range of motion improves, you'll be able to put those items back down at a lower level. In the meantime, store items at a better working level. For you folks that are coming in for your shoulder surgery, also think about repositioning items so that you're not having to reach up high and move heavy things down to a working level. Please make sure that you have clean sheets and a clean home to go home to. This is an infection control concept. I assure you, while you're with us in the hospital, we will be cleaning your room regularly. We will be changing your linens regularly. So make sure that you have that clean environment to go home to. Preparing for the surgery, now's the time. Get out, get the grocery shopping done. Spend that time in the kitchen. Prepare and freeze meals. Make your life as easy as possible when you first get home. Let's also talk a little bit about making up some ice packs. Cold therapy is going to be instrumental following your joint replacement surgery. While you're with us in the hospital, we're going to have ice on that artificial joint essentially around the clock. When you get home, you're going to want to continue to ice down that new joint. You're going to particularly want to ice down that joint following your exercises. And remember, you're going to be doing your exercises 
two and three times each day at home. So make up multiple ice packs. You're going to find that ice is going to help to ma better manage your pain. It will help to better control your swelling. It will allow you to use less narcotic pain medication. Ice is going to be instrumental throughout your recovery process. And lastly, do consider the furry members of your family and if you need to, make arrangements for your pets, board them out as necessary. Think about it, when you first get home, those little critters that might get under your walker and under your feet, that could be a problem. We could truly talk horror stories about big dogs jumping up onto uh, hip and knee dressings. So please, do consider uh, and make arrangements for your pets as necessary. All right, preparing for the surgery. Let's talk about your need to get a front wheel walker. Patients, please understand that each of you coming in for a hip or a knee replacement surgery, you are required to have a walker. Now, the one that is pictured, that is the preferred walker by our physical therapist. They're readily available. You want to make sure that you have one on hand before you come in for your surgery. If you're going to be utilizing your insurance privileges with a low or no copay, please make sure that you get this prescription, your order for a walker from your surgeon so that that can be uh, delivered over to the medical supply company of your choice. Let's get this taken care of and get that walker secured before you come in for your surgery. There is also another item that you might consider purchasing, uh, durable medical equipment. It is called the dressing kit. It is available at our local durable medical equipment stores. Particularly you folks that are going to be coming in to have your hip replaced, this kit will help in your recovery geared largely towards lower body dressing. Hip patients, while you're with us in the hospital, you'll get the opportunity to learn how to use these tools of the dressing kit and I assure you it is highly recommended. So do consider making that purchase. Okay, let's jump forward in time. Let's talk about your preoperative physical exam with your surgeon. Leading up to your surgery, you're gonna participate in a variety of different appointments. Let's talk about that preoperative physical exam with your surgeon or his physician assistant. At this appointment, you're gonna get the opportunity to go over the data from all of your other preoperative appointments. At this appointment, your surgeon or the physician assistant, they have an obligation to review with you this surgical procedure, outlining for you not only the potential risks of this surgery, but also the, uh, uh, the goals and the objectives of the surgery. Once all of your questions, once all of your concerns have been addressed, then you will be asked to sign the surgical consent form and legally we can proceed with your surgery. Please, at this appointment, ask your surgeon, are there any medications that you should take the day of your surgery? For most of you, you will not take any of your regular daily medications the day of your surgery. The nursing staff, we will provide those medications to you once you come up to the orthopedic unit. So please, ask your surgeon if there are any medications that you should take the morning of your surgery with a sip of water. And once again, this appointment is going to be the last opportunity that you will get for the prescription for your walker. So please get that taken care of if you have not done so already. After that preoperative appointment with the surgeon has taken place, please call your surgeon's office if you experience any changes in your skin, such as cuts or scrapes. I can see it happening. I've told you, you're going to be exempt from doing chores, so somebody's going to try and get some work done around the house, maybe some yard work. And think about it, if you got even a little tiny scratch on that limb, that arm, that leg that you're going to have your surgery on, and if that scratch is looking even a little bit festered, that's going to postpone your surgery, I guarantee it. That's why it's recommended that you avoid shaving near that surgical site for approximately the week before your surgery. Avoid the possibility of a razor neck. Please, if you develop any kind of cough, cold, fever, or flu-like symptoms, call your surgeon's office, get it checked out. Diarrhea, nauseousness, vomiting, please don't just dismiss this. 
get some assistance. We need to make sure that you are as infection free as possible coming into this major surgery. Okay, jumping forward in time. It's now the day before your surgery, the night before your surgery. You will be called from our hospital surgical services to confirm your time to arrive for your surgery. You know the date of your surgery and our hospital surgical services will be calling you to confirm your time to arrive. Now, if your surgery is scheduled for a Monday, you will receive this phone call the Friday or Saturday before your Monday procedure. And please, do not get into a panic if it's 5 p.m., 6, or even 7 p.m. We will call you to confirm your time to arrive at the hospital. Now, let's spend a little time and let's talk about the antibacterial shower that your surgeon is directing you to take. At one of the appointments that you will attend to us, you will be receiving two bottles of an antibacterial soap. You will also be given the instructions for how to use this soap. Let's take a couple of minutes and provide a little overview to the necessity of these showers. Starting three nights out before your surgery, you're going to use a half a bottle of the soap and you're going to shower down following the instructions that are provided to you. You will do that again the second night. You will repeat this process the night before your surgery and you'll complete this one final time the morning of your surgery. And let me tell you why. This is just one way for this hospital to provide to you what we can to help prevent you from developing an infection based upon the surgery itself. Think about it, when you come in for the surgery, you're gonna report into one of our operating suites. That's a sterilized environment. All of the instruments, all of the equipment that your surgeon will be using, that's all been sterilized. Your surgeon and everyone else of the surgical team will be wearing a fully complete enclosed sterilized outfit. But the one thing that we can't sterilize is your skin. And understand that we all carry a bacterial load on our skin. So the objective behind the showers is to reduce that bacterial load as much as you possibly can. Minimize your chances of getting an infection from the surgery by going through the shower process. Now, you'll also read of some other suggestions to minimize the bacterial count. Be sure to have clean sheets on your bed when you start this process three nights out. You don't have to change your bedding each night, but make sure that they're clean when you start this process. If you sleep in sleepwear, make sure that your pajamas are clean when you start this process. You don't have to change them each night, but make sure that they're clean when you start this process. Understand what your healthy objective is and do everything that you can to reduce that bacterial load. And once again, before your surgery, do not eat or drink anything after midnight unless you have been otherwise directed to do so. Okay, it's now the big day of your surgery. We have mentioned several times now about not taking any other medications other than directed. So please, follow these instructions and understand the health risks involved. What to bring to the hospital? Of course, this information is in your journal your hip journals, your knee journals, and your shoulder journals. Let's talk a little bit about what to pack and to bring in for your hospital stay. Please, of course, do bring in your toiletry items, your personal items. Let's spend a minute and let's talk about the comfy clothing to pack along with you. As I had mentioned to you, you will be very active while you're with us on the orthopedic unit. So please do consider packing along appropriate clothing to be active with us. If you are a knee patient, do consider making sure that you have shorts to wear while you're with us in the hospital. That will allow us to have better access at your knee dressing and that surgical site. Also, if you're coming in to have a hip replacement surgery, do consider a baggier pair of pants, something loose fitting, something that we're gonna be able to have access to that hip surgical site to monitor it as well. A pair of pants, a pair of shorts, something that's going to be easy to 
pull up and drop down and clear over those surgical sites and the dressings. Shoulder patients, you're going to want to be bringing in clothing that is more in the pullover fashion, a pullover t-shirt, pullover sweatshirt or other shirts and jackets. Our occupational therapist will be working with you shoulder patients and helping you to learn how to dress given your shoulder restrictions. You see comments about comfy stable shoes or slippers. Now while you're with us in the hospital we will be providing to you the grippy socks. We give everybody the grippy socks. However if you do want to wear your own shoes or slippers that's fine but please nothing open heeled or open back that you might accidentally step out of. Remember you are at risk to fall. Hip and knee patients please be sure to have your walker available with it labeled with your name on it. If you use a CPAP machine at home, bring that machine in with you. This is certainly one time that you're going to need your CPAP machine as your respiratory system will be a little bit suppressed from the use of anesthesia. As far as your advanced directives go, your physician ordered life-sustaining therapy or your power of attorney documents, please, patients, if that information is important to you, it's important to us, bring that paperwork in. It will be uh, collected up by the preoperative nurses. It will be a part of your working paper chart and we will return that information to you at the time of your discharge. Please make sure that you have your insurance cards and a form of payment for your prescriptions as needed. On the day of your discharge from the hospital, the nursing staff will have the opportunity to make sure that your prescriptions are delivered down to our outpatient pharmacy if that is your desire. But of course, you will need a way to pay for those prescriptions on your way out of the hospital. Please remove and leave all jewelry at home. And please leave all of your medications at home unless you are otherwise directed to bring specific medications in. When and where to go? Well, you'll want to make sure that you know where the Furstenberg Tower is here on the hospital campus. Your surgery will take place in the Furstenberg Tower and you will be recovering with us on the eighth floor of the Furstenberg Tower. So as necessary, become familiar with our hospital campus. You will arrive at the Furstenberg Tower two hours prior to your surgery start time. Please take the elevators up to level two. Level two is our surgery registration area. It is also the waiting area for you coaches. Coaches, you'll want to be in that waiting room. Following the surgery, the surgeon will come out to find you, let you know how your patient is doing and how the surgery went. After that visit with the surgeon, then we can head on up to the eighth floor of the Furstenberg Tower and get you settled into your room. When you first check in in the morning, please leave all your valuables in the car. When you first check in in the morning, we don't even know what room you've been assigned to. Coaches, you'll have an opportunity to get those personal items and bring them up to the assigned room at a later time. Pre-surgically, we will have you check in approximately two hours in advance. We will have you change into one of our lovely designer gowns. We will check your vital signs and we will also be checking your blood sugar level, whether you're diabetic or not. Our blood sugar levels have actually become one of our new vital signs. In that preoperative area, the nurses, they will start an IV and they will begin to introduce medications and fluids as directed. As a part of our preoperative patient safety checks, your surgeon will be taking a surgical marking pen and initialing your arm or your leg and then that way we make sure that we're doing surgery on the correct limb. Prior to your surgery you'll get the opportunity to meet with your anesthesiologist and they will discuss with you the form of anesthesia that is most appropriate based upon your health history and the surgery itself. Following your surgery, you will be wheeled into the recovery area where you will be monitored continuously by the specially trained nurses in that area. They will make sure that you are stable and ready to be released to come up to the eighth floor of the Furstenberg Tower where we are going to get you up and we're going to get you moving. Here's a picture of one of the hallways outside in the 
Furstenberg Tower. We fondly refer to our hallways as the therapy track. You're going to be up and walking that track soon after your surgery. All of our hospital rooms on the eighth floor, they're all private rooms. The eighth floor is considered the penthouse suite of the Furstenberg Tower. As you see, we have these terrific panoramic views out over the Vancouver and Portland skylines. All of our rooms come equipped with an in-house satellite television system. The tower is Wi-Fi enabled. You can use your cell phones. In fact, we encourage our patients to bring in your electronics. Let's face it, that's how we stay connected nowadays. Coaches, you see pictured here a couch. That couch is also a futon. So coaches, if you would care to spend the night, you certainly are allowed to do so. Just let the staff know and we will make that bed up for you. Now, patients, one thing that you don't see pictured is that in all of our rooms, we have a recliner chair for our patients to use. Following your joint replacement surgery, you're not bedridden. We're going to have you up and out of that hospital bed and up in the chair. You'll be sitting upright. This is better for your heart. It's better for your lungs. You'll be able to do your knee exercises, your hip exercises, and your shoulder exercises while sitting upright in that chair. This way then we can also keep our hospital beds truly for more sleep and restful purposes. Following your joint replacement patient, we will be asking you to assess your level of pain quite frequently. We will be asking you to assess your level of pain on that pain assessment scale of 0 to 10, where 0 is no pain and 10 is the worst pain you've ever experienced in your life. Now, some patients can have a little bit of a challenge in translating this sense of pain and putting a number to it. So as you see, we do have ways to help us to make sure that we are communicating with you effectively. Along with the number of pain, please also be sure to tell your nursing staff the type of discomfort that you are experiencing because we now know that there are different ways to treat the different types of pain. We will be doing everything we can to help to manage your pain, be that through the application of ice. Sometimes we find that even just by repositioning that arm or that leg, it can help to decrease your level of pain. Move that new joint. There is absolutely no reason why you shouldn't move that new knee, move that new hip, move that shoulder within the uh, uh, restraints that you are allowed to do so. Also, of course, we will be using our medications to manage your pain, be they narcotic or non-narcotic. And lastly, we cannot make your pain go completely away. Our goal is to manage your pain to a tolerable level. Not the level that you might wish it to be, but to a tolerable level. So please, make sure that you are just having an open conversation with your nursing staff with regards to your pain medications. Patients, please understand that this is largely your responsibility. Please understand that with our new tighter controls of our opioid pain medications, the nursing staff can no longer just bring you a pain pill. Patients, you have to ask for it. So, let this be just an open conversation so that your nurses can do everything that they can to help to keep you comfortable. In terms of preventing post-operative complications, let's talk about the prevention of blood clots or pulmonary embolisms. While you're with us in the hospital, you will be wearing a pair of the TED hose, the compression stockings. For you hip and knee patients, you'll be wearing a pair of the compression stockings while you're with us in the hospital. Hip and knee patients, you'll go home wearing a pair of the compression stockings. A large part of your discharge education will be about your wear and care of the compression stockings. While you're with us in the hospital, be sure to continue to do ankle pumps. That motion with your foot, with your ankle, that helps to increase the circulation of blood down into the calf muscle, which is where you would more than likely develop a blood clot. Also, get up and move about. Early circulation is the best way to prevent the formation of a blood clot. In an effort to prevent respiratory issues, we'll be encouraging our patients to take big, deep breaths, cough, keep your lungs clear. You will be provided with an instrument. It is called an incentive spirometer. It is pictured here for you. In the preoperative area, those nurses, they will coach you. They will teach you how to use the incentive spirometer. It will come up with your personal belongings. It will be set at your bedside table, 
and we will encourage you to take big, deep breaths. Keep your lungs clear. Patients, please understand that while you're under the effects of anesthesia, your lungs are not fully inflating. So we need to bring that good oxygen saturation status back. So take big, deep breaths. Use that incentive spirometer as directed. Preventing post-operative complications. In terms of preventing infections, we'll be checking your vital signs frequently, paying attention to your body temperature. We will be inspecting that surgical site looking for any outward signs of infection. And all of our patients receive three doses of IV antibiotics. You can't do any better at preventing infection than you can through the IV antibiotics. In terms of nauseousness, vomiting, constipation, please just let your nurses know how you're feeling. We have good medications to help you through this post-operative time period. We share with you many goals, mutual goals on the day of surgery. But get excited about that new joint. That new joint, it does move, it does work. Move that joint. From the very moment that you come up to the orthopedic unit, please move that joint. The exercises that are in your journal, do those exercises from the very minute that you come up here. There is no reason why you shouldn't be able to move that joint this will help to lessen your overall level of pain. The staff will have you sitting at the edge of your bed. We will have you standing at the edge of your bed. You may well be taking steps in your room or out into the hall truly within hours after your total joint replacement surgery. So get excited about that. We certainly are. While you're with us in the hospital, we have a lot of information to share with you. So please be on the lookout for our newsletters, particularly you coaches. Watch for the daily newsletters. There's a lot of information that will help you not only while you're with us in the hospital, but also as you go home. While you're with us in the hospital, all of our patients participate in physical therapy. We have two sessions of physical therapy at a minimum that you will participate in. You may have your first session of physical therapy the day of your surgery. All patients will participate in group physical therapy. We do have a session in the morning at 9 o'clock. Coaches, please plan on being here for that group physical therapy session. You're going to learn how to help your patient to move and to do those exercises at home. While you're with us in the hospital, we will be uh, spending time and helping you in walking the halls, walking that therapy track. We will be making sure that that new hip and that new knee is tracking straight and true and going forward. While you're with us in the hospital, you'll learn how to get that new hip and knee up and down stairs. We have a practice set of stairs here on the orthopedic unit. You will master that before you leave the, the hospital. While you're with us in the hospital, you might also have the opportunity to work with our occupational therapist. If you're coming in for a hip or a shoulder replacement uh, surgery, you will certainly work with our occupational therapist. They will be helping you with what we uh, refer to as activities of daily living, like using the dressing tools to get dressed, getting that new hip or knee in and out of the car, rising from chairs and the toilet height. Do you need a toilet seat riser? We will be able to assess for that need with the assistance of our occupational therapist. Again, coaches, please plan on being here for those occupational therapy sessions. You're going to learn a lot that will help you in taking your patients uh, home. Hip and shoulder patients, please do be sure to review in your journal about your hip precautions. Hip patients, you can find these precautions on page 42 in your journal. Shoulder patients, they can be found on page, uh, page 44 of your journal. There may well be precautions uh, in place following your hip replacement surgery. There will certainly be precautions in place following your shoulder replacement surgery. The precautions for your hip look like these. These are the positions, these are the movements that you will want to avoid to, pot, to keep from possibly dislocating that new hip joint. Shoulder patients also do be aware of your shoulder precautions. This too will help to keep you from dislocating that new shoulder joint. While you're with us in the hospital, we'll get the opportunity to review with you in greater detail about your hip or shoulder precautions and or whether or not they are 
in existence. In all of our hospital rooms, we have a whiteboard. The whiteboard is a means of communication. The whiteboard also actually lays out your plan of care. What are our goals for the day? What are our goals for your safe discharge? This information is updated each and every shift so that you'll know the names of your care team. This is a means of communication and so I will apologize in advance because sometimes the information that we put up on the board it might have a little too much medical ease. If there are words, if there are phrases, if there are abbreviations that we're posting up on this board that you do not understand, please just ask for clarification. Let's get you prepared for your discharge to home. Now, most patients are ready to leave the hospital the day after their surgery. However, let's do talk about our mutual goals for your discharge. Our mutual goals do include that you have met all of our physical therapy goals. Our goals for discharge also mean that you have your pain well controlled. You're able to get up, you're able to move about with good pain control. Our mutual goals will make sure that you have no issues with your heart, with your lungs. You are medically stable and ready to go home and it just so happens that the majority of our patients have met those goals the day after their surgery. But please do understand if you have not met those goals, if there are any challenges, if there are any concerns, we will keep you under our care until we know that you are stable and ready to go home. Let's talk a little bit further now about preventing blood clots. Upon your discharge from the hospital, please continue to do the ankle pumps for circulation. Please continue to wear your compression stockings as directed. Get up and move about frequently and take your blood thinning medication as directed. Each of you will go home with an order to take a blood thinner. You will know what that medication is and you will know how to take it safely and effectively before you leave the hospital. Please be sure to continue to take your narcotic pain medications exactly as prescribed by your surgeon and speak with that surgeon about when and how to discontinue your pain medications. And please be sure to take your stool softeners and laxatives to offset the constipative effects of those pain medications. Okay, let's get things wrapped up. Let's talk about the prevention of infection transmission and your use of preventative antibiotics. Patients, please understand that following any total joint replacement surgery, it is recommended that you take a preventative dose of antibiotics prior to any dental procedure and or any invasive surgical procedure. And it may well be recommended that you take this antibiotic for the rest of your life. Now, some clarification. What we are addressing here and now is the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario would be the transmission of bacteria into your bloodstream due to a procedure. That bacteria circulates throughout your bloodstream, finds that artificial joint where there's lots of places for bacteria to hide and reproduce, and now we've got a real problem because your artificial joint is infected you're going to have to come back into the hospital. It will be surgically opened up and washed out and you're going to go home on IV antibiotics for six weeks. Yes, that's the worst case scenario. And according to our data, according to our research, we know that we can do the best that we can do to prevent this from happening if you take a prophylactic dose of antibiotics prior to any dental procedure and or any surgical procedure. Now, we're not picking on the dental industry, not at all. What we're now talking about is that possibility of exposure opportunity. Every six months, twice a year, you go see your dentist and there is your exposure opportunity that might lead to that worst case scenario. So, you will be directed to take a prophylactic dose of antibiotics prior to any dental procedure. And yes, this includes even a simple cleaning because there's no such thing as a simply infected artificial joint. Please have this discussion with your dentist. 
please get clarification from your orthopedic surgeon so that you will know how to safely move forward with good dental health and good dental care. Okay, also, do what you can to minimize constipation. We say hydrate, drink lots of fluids, motate, get up and move about, and medicate. Do take your laxatives, your stool softeners, and extra fiber, and the diet. Airport security, yes, you bet. That new joint is going to light up in security. So, as you approach that TSA station or in a federal building, just let it be known that you do have an artificial joint and you will be screened appropriately. When is it okay to travel? We're now thinking, are you out of that window of threat to potentially develop a blood clot due to travel? Think about it. It's a prime setup. Whether you're traveling by plane, train, or automobile, you're seated, your legs are down in a dependent position, you're not getting up and moving around much. If you're traveling by air, we call it coach class syndrome. So please, before you travel, make sure that your surgeon knows about these travel plans. Let's make sure that you're going to be safe to travel with regards to preventing blood clots. A successful outcome. Truly, our number one mutual goal is for you to have a successful surgical outcome. But as you can see on this slide, bullet point number one, this successful outcome is dependent upon you your motivation and your participation in the exercises that you'll be doing at home. Many times I've had to tell patients, you have to move that joint the most while it hurts the most, and that can be very true. On behalf of my fellow co-workers at Peace Health Southwest Medical Center, I thank you for taking this opportunity to view this class presentation. We look forward to being a part of your care at Peace Health Southwest Medical Center. Thank you.